Hey guys, this is Melody from Tune Bucket, and today we're going to talk about how to play or not to play background talk music. So, first of all, I want to start off by saying that you probably already know the song that I'm playing because I'm playing the melody. So, um, very first point I want to make, the first point, okay, the first point I want to make is that when you play any type of background music or talk music, probably 90% of the time it's appropriate not to play a song in a way that it's recognizable. What is background music or talk music? Well, background music is uh, playing in the background of whatever is going on, whether it's someone speaking or a presentation being given or anything like that. Talk music, kind of the same thing. Um, some people call it by different names. Here, talk music, sometimes it can be in the context of when someone is getting revved up, you know, and they're, aha, yeah, amen, and God said, you know, and you kind of, you kind of want to be able to flow with that too. Now this is a big question for a lot of people and I have people ask me all the time, show me what to play for background music. Show me what to play when someone's talking. So can I give you chords? Yeah, I could do that, but I would be giving you essentially a crutch. You'd still be playing that same background progression two years from now until someone else gave you a set of chords that you play for background music. What you hear people playing when they play background or talk music are chords that they already play in songs that they know. So I want to shift your mind from thinking, oh, I have to have this one set of chords for background music and these are the chords that I play. No, you already have chords. So hang with me for just a few minutes and I'm gonna shift your mindset on how to find chords that you already know and implement those into background or talk music. Okay, so the song I was just playing, I'm sure many of you recognized it, it was Amazing Grace. Now, why is it so important not to play a song in a way that's recognizable for background music? Well, for the same reason that it just became recognizable to you. You remember the song that I was playing, what I was playing. You remember the song that I was playing, but you probably don't remember what I was saying when I was playing the song. So playing a song in a way that's recognizable is very distracting and can take away from whatever's going on. So keep in mind when you are playing background or talk music, you are under whatever is going on. So whether it's a speaker, a minister, whoever is up there uh, behind the pulpit or you know whatever setting that you're playing in, you want to be able to follow that person. If you're actually dominating that, then people are hearing what you're playing and they're not really getting what the minister or the speaker is saying. So always make sure that you're staying under that. Um, it's important not to play too loudly because then I'm a distraction. So what I was saying, if I'm talking soft and the music is louder than me, then there's no point in background music because it's totally distracting. All right, so back to Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace is a song that we all know. I'm pretty sure we all know. Um, and you know the chords to it or you have a chord chart somewhere in your files. Pull it out, okay? Here are some options that you have for using Amazing Grace as background music. Now, think of it as um, an order of progressions. You may even wanna take the chords of Amazing Grace and write them out on a different sheet of paper without the words. So that's a chord of progressions. Did I say chord of progressions? I meant to say progression of chords. Think of Amazing Grace as a progression of chords, okay? Because that's all background music is. Take those chords, put them on a different sheet of paper, and you have some background music, okay? So what you want to make sure when you're playing background music is that you're not playing a song in rhythm or the chords in rhythm. So if I were playing Amazing Grace, I may start off on the first chord, and then play the second chord, then go to the third chord really quick. So I'm keeping it 
very flowy, if that's a word. Um, I'm flowing along with it, but there is no rhythm. So up until that point, you know that I'm playing the chords of Amazing Grace, but people in the audience don't recognize that song as Amazing Grace. Another thing you can do to keep it from being recognizable to people is changing your inversions in your right hand. Okay, same three chords. F, F over A, B flat. That's all I was playing. Um, but I changed the inversion in my right hand. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm going to start on F. Maybe kind of roll that up. Second chord, third chord. Okay, so see how I stretch the first chord out? And then I put the next two chords together. Now don't play it that way every time. You can change it up. But what I'm trying to, um, to teach you is that I'm using these chords, the progression I already know, but I'm changing up the rhythm so it's not. See what I'm saying? It's not in rhythm because that's very, um, I don't know, it's just very distracting is the only word that I can think of at this point. So take the rhythm away when you're doing background talk music. Just take it away. So in a song like Amazing Grace, you could take the song from top to bottom, play the chords without rhythm. Now, if you start, if you get to the place where you start recognizing that you're playing the song in rhythm, just kind of hold that chord out for a little bit longer and uh, get back into the groove of not playing the song in rhythm for background music. There is a beauty in kind of letting a chord hang. So if someone's talking and they're being very serious, it's nice to let that chord hang because it doesn't override what they're doing as opposed to um, if it's very serious and you're moving around a lot, the musical movement also causes dissonance in people's minds. So. Um, you'll notice if you listen to audio stories that there's music sometimes behind a, a, a real active scene and it gets your heart racing because the music is intense. Da 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 You know, it's getting people going. That's the background music. Or if um, it's a really sad scene and, you know, two friends, one of them's having to move to the Congo <laughs> and sad okay and um, they're saying goodbye it's gonna be very slow and there's not gonna be a whole lot of rhythm because the music is trying to portray the feeling of what is going on so back to what I was saying you can either play the song or the progression from top to bottom we're using the amazing grace progression you can play that from top to bottom or you can take it line by line and play the song backwards. So then people are really not going to know what progression you're playing, what song progression that you're playing. I'll show you. So like in Amazing Grace, the last line, um, Amazing Grace, I'll sound like me. Okay, the last line. I once was lost. Okay, so the last line of that song is, uh, twas blind, or it was, is it twas or was? Anyway, was blind, but now I see. So I could start off on was blind. But now and then do I once was lost. But now I'm found. Uh, the line before that would be that saved a ridge. Rich. change up once again those inversions where you're not playing the melody on the top. Uh, amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Okay. 
same progressions. So I just took it line by line, played it backwards. Another tip when you're playing um, low key background music, slower background music, play your chords melodically. And what I mean when I say that is you're going to have different notes that you're playing. Play them separately. I'm just playing a triad. I'm playing an F chord, CFA. Okay. Nothing fancy. Just playing that chord melodically and it makes it flow a little better. Okay, so talk music um, is probably going to be sometimes upbeat. So you could use a song like Power in the Blood. There's power, power, wonder working, power in the blood. So that was the last line. Precious blood of the lamb. Or you know, if someone's saying, you better make sure you're washed in the blood. Oh, yeah. Playing the same chords, I'm kind of chopping them up. Hitting them. And then you can use a shaken syndrome. I'm just taking the chords I'm playing. And just shaking them, that's all. Take the first line, the fourth line, repeat them over and over. Then repeat the second line, maybe mix the second line with the fourth line. But take your song progressions and use those as your background music because what's going to happen is you know a lot of songs. You may know hundreds of songs. So instead of me giving you one background progression that you're going to drive in the ground, it's going to be a rut about six feet deep by the time we get another background progression, you can take progressions from unlimited resource of songs that you already know, apply these techniques, and you have background music. What else can you do? You could take songs, progressions, and mix them up. So. Maybe use the first line of Amazing Grace and then go into um, the first line of Little as Much When God is in It or the fourth line of Little as Much When God is in It and mix them up. You know, have the first line of Amazing Grace, the fourth line of Little as Much When God is in It, the fourth line of Amazing Grace and let that be your progression. You know, you could even write that out until you get familiar with um, how to just come up with background music on your own. But take the progressions that you already know and apply those to background music and you've got it. You've got an unlimited resource for chords, for background music. So just make sure you're applying these techniques. Don't play background music in a steady rhythm. Stretch some chords out and then speed some chords up. Make sure you're following behind whoever is speaking. You know, if they're um, at a real serious point, back off, leave air, leave room in the music for um, people to be able to hear whoever's speaking instead of hearing you. You want to be a compliment to that. If they're really revving it up, go with them, you know, shake it a little bit and now uh, they come back down, you know, leave some space. So when you rev it up, you're, you're probably going to be more intense. You're going to have more stuff going on when you back off, leave a little bit more space and room in the music. Take your song progressions, play them one line at a time, um, mix up the lines, and make sure that you're playing your chords melodically, especially on slower kind of songs. That's really going to add to the beauty of your background music. Start getting creative and then post videos where we can see how you are growing and improving. We are so proud of all of our students and we wanna follow your journey. If you have any questions you'd like to have answered on Tuning Tuesday, send us an email to info at the Stay tuned, guys.